Hey, I'm Rob Witcher from Destination Certification, and I'm here to help you pass the CISSP exam. We're going to go through a review of the major topics related to databases in Domain 8 to understand how they interrelate and to guide your studies. This is the second of two videos for Domain 8. I've included links to the other mind map videos in the description below. These mind maps are one part of our complete CISSP masterclass. Databases provide a means to store an organized collection of structured data in a table with nice, neat rows and columns, making it easy to add, access, modify, and analyze data. Relational databases, which is what we'll be discussing in this video, allow data in different tables to be related, connected with data in other tables on a relational model. A database management system is the collection of components that allow the database to be controlled, to be used by people and processes. We'll start by looking at the components of a database management system, and then we'll get into the relational components of a database. The first component of a DMBS, database management system, is hardware. The DBMS needs to run on a server that provides sufficient processing power and storage space. The next component is the software. We first need an operating system, and then DBMS software itself that will run on the operating system. Examples of database management systems include MySQL, Oracle, RDBMS, IBM DB2, Microsoft SQL Server, Amazon RDS, among many others. The database management software enables the control of the database. A database can contain one or more tables. These tables contain rows and columns of data. If you want to roll with the cool database kids, you can refer to rows as tuples or records. I think I have demonstrated how uncool I am by uttering that last sentence. Columns can also be referred to as attributes. And the intersection of a tuple and an attribute is a field, a cell of data in the table. As I mentioned with a relational database, you can relate data in one table to data in another table. This is done through the use of primary and foreign keys. The primary key is a unique identifier for a specific record or row of data. A primary key for a person would be something like their social insurance number, passport number, or in this case, their student ID. A foreign key is how we link, how we form a relationship to another table. The foreign key is a column in a table whose value corresponds to the primary keys in another table. In this case, we have a course registration table, and there's a row for each course that a student is registered in and that row contains their student ID as the foreign key. We can therefore link which courses a student is registered in by using their student ID. The language we use to communicate with to control our relational database management system is known as structured query language SQL. Users or processes can send SQL commands to the database management system to store new data, modify data, delete data, and so forth. And rather obviously, the final major component of our DBMS is all the data that we store in it. A database will be of little use to the organization if the data it contains is inaccurate. Thus, we must have controls in place to ensure the integrity of data. In a modern, high-performance database, we typically allow multiple transactions to run concurrently, in parallel. A transaction is a unit of work typically encapsulating several operations, including reads, writes, acquiring walks, etc. It makes it significantly more difficult to maintain the integrity of data in a database when multiple users or processes are executing multiple transactions concurrently. One of the major controls we use to prevent data corruption when multiple transactions are running concurrently is locks. A record, a tuple, can be locked meaning that only one user or process may update the record until the lock is released by either committing the update or rolling back. To further ensure the integrity of data, we should also enforce a standard set of properties known as ACID that guarantee database transactions are processed reliably. The A in ACID is for atomicity, which means that all changes being made as part of a transaction take effect or none. The C in ACID is consistency, which means updates to the database are consistent with the rules. The rules are enforced. The I in ACID is for isolation, which means transactions are invisible to other users until complete. And the D in ACID is durability, which means completed transactions will not be lost. 
they are durable. A major type of attack against databases that you definitely need to understand for the exam is SQL injection. An attacker can inject SQL code through a web application to control the database behind it. I've talked about this a couple times already, but a major type of attack against databases that you definitely need to understand for the exam is SQL injection. This is where I write an attacker can inject SQL code through a web application to control the database behind. Something that we as security professionals should always work to prevent. I talk about SQL injection attacks in a lot more detail in Domain 3 Video 4. The link to that video is in the description below. And there we go. That is an overview of databases within Domain 8, covering the most critical concepts you need to know for the exam. This is the final mind map video in the series. My business partner, John Birdie, has been teaching CISP classes for over 10 years. I've been teaching myself for around 10 years. We love helping folks like yourself learn and become better security professionals. Truly, what drives us to continue teaching and spending so much time creating the best CISSP study materials is we find it incredibly personally rewarding to guide folks like yourself to achieving your CISSP certification. We get emails all the time from our students saying things like, I passed, <laughs> thank you. We love these emails. So I truly hope these mind map videos have helped you in your studies and that they will help you achieve your CISSP certification. Thanks very much for watching and all the best in your studies. Thank you.